Hi, I'm Nisio Baba, and uh, we are here in a very picturesque part of Hoboken, New Jersey, to talk to Sonic Youth. Um, how are you guys doing today? Okay. Kind of pretty good. Excellent. Um, so, um, new record. Um, I don't know how much, I don't know if you guys have uh, like an agenda or vibe that you're going for with each new record, but was there a, a general idea with this one or a concept you were sharing? Oh. I don't know. We were pretty um, excited to make it because we kept putting it off. We were, God, I think we were trying to think, I think we were going to try to make it like before the summer or something. Yeah, we were like going we to start in March and then we ended up starting in like September because we just had so many other things yeah. going on. Exactly. We were excited to make it. We were excited because we were on a new label, Matador, that in some regards was kind of like a homecoming of sorts to us with some of the people that worked there that we worked with early in our career. We were free of the big corporate beast. Uh, we were free as a, a country from uh, eight years of uh, blackness. You know, it's lots of, uh, lots of excitement. I think it's... An Blackness is new, too. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That was, I should have said it that way. Uh, eight years of George Bush. Yeah. And darkness. Dark, darkness. Yeah, darkness. Oops. Or evilness. <laughs> I'm actually I'm curious about the label transition. Um, I, I'd seen you guys saying that there were some issues with being, uh, being on the major. Um, were they, you know, did artistic issues, just sort of commercial and management issues? Yeah, this is like boring, you know? I mean, we didn't know anybody there anymore. I mean, when we first uh, signed to Geffen Records, it was cool. We, they were like friends of ours. Ray Farrell from SST Records was working there. Mark Cates, who we knew from college radio, was working there. And that was like, you know, that was, it, was, it was at this time where a lot of people coming out of the, the scene that we developed together in the 80s, you know, with independent music, were sort of getting work at major labels, you know, and, um, you know, post-college radio and whatever. So it was just kind of made sense to some degree that we would sort of, like, work together on this. But, you know. Yeah, and with the current state of things, uh, it's not really... This, when we moved to a major, it was partly for better distribution, and, and that situation is not really the same anymore. I mean, a, a record label like Matador can pretty much distribute as easily as, as a major at this point, and in a way, because they're music lovers, they know a little bit more, they're a little more savvy about where they can get the records in a certain way. Are there any things that you do now in the course of making a record that your, your younger selves would have been really surprised by? I'm more surprised by what we did when we were younger, in a way. <laughs> Now your older self is yeah. surprised about your younger self. Well, I, never, did. I never really listen to our, our our older records unless you kind of have to, like to learn a song or something like that, or you, maybe you hear it on the radio, which is extremely rare. But uh, I mean, yeah, it's like lyrics, you know, that are just like, God, I can't believe I wrote. I would have never written those lyrics now, kind of thing. Okay. That, you know, or when we did Daydream Nation, like when we had to sort of listen to like all of our separate tracks on the masters just so we could hear what each of us were doing to sort of learn or decode what those songs were, what was going on. I was like, I, I couldn't, not only could I not believe like what I was playing, but I, I had absolutely no memory of it or like, you doing know, it? of doing it. It's like, why would I do that? <laughs> you couldn't believe it because it was so crude, you mean? Well, yeah, it was way more, yeah. it was way more, it was, it was, it was crude, but there's also, it was kind of interesting because that record sounds like there's so much kind of complex guitar interplay in a way, and, it, it, and it's, it has that, it's sort of deceptive. I mean, it is kind of there, but the simplest gestures are the ones that sort of like kind of, um, you know, illuminated what was going on. It's like, well, I wouldn't have done anything too sophisticated here because it was like 1988 or something. Okay. Um, and I just, I really wasn't there with that yet. So I was just saying, I must have done something very simplistic here, and then there it was. As as <laughs> kind of, you know. So that was kind of, it's kind of surprising. Okay. Well, I, well, speaking of guitars, you guys, you know, have spent, a, apart from Steve, obviously, have spent a whole lot of your lives dealing with guitars of various sorts. I wonder if, um, has there ever been like a waning of the love affair with the instrument, where you're know, like, I should go play flute for a while or something? I played flute in uh, grade school. Oh, really? And I was actually, I think I was pretty good. And I, and I kind of bummed out my flute teacher, my music teacher, because um, the first band recital we we're going to do, uh, he, we right before we were gonna do it that day, he said, "Well, everybody has to wear a bow tie." Oh, and I man. said, "I'm not wearing any fucking bow tie, dude." And I walked. And, it's like, <laughs> and I was like, and then I and I said, "Like, I don't want to take uh, flute lessons anymore." And he says, "Like, but you must. You're like, you're like the best student in the class." I was like, "Yeah, but I ain't wearing a bow tie." <laughs> so, but 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 the the love of guitars has remained consistent for you. I've never. Yeah, you know, it's a kind of a limitless instrument in a way. Yeah, it's really limited, but it's right. Like, it's both I don't, I don't, limited I don't and limit, limitless. 
I hate. I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't really. I don't, like going into guitar stores is, is kind of the nightmare for me. Yeah. I don't really, I'm not really gearhead. Lee's pretty in the gear kind of guitar stuff. I'm not interested in that kind of thing any more than you. But I mean, I, I like the guitars we play. You know more you know. about guitars than I do. Maybe. Like I don't know. I don't know too much about guitars. How many strings are they? Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> of what part of the set it is. It starts out with six. I, I know that you guys all sort of uh, spend a lot of time involved with and keeping up with, with new music. Um, do you, do, how does that affect what, what you do when you're doing a Sonic Youth album at this point? You know, you, you got to take inspiration from places. It's, it's, it's inspiring to hear other people doing cool things. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we like to take interesting bands out on the road with us because, you know, they inspire you to go out and, like, be, be good every night. And, and you, you know, you, you certainly lift things and either inspiration or actual actual uh, <laughs> bits and pieces of songs. I mean, you know, you, you just get inspired by all kinds of things. So it's, it's great to hear both young, new bands and radical uh, adults doing cool stuff, you know? It's hard to find time to play records and stuff that you get, you know. But it's nice to have them. I like having them more, more than I have like playing them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they look good, you know, and they feel cool and they smell kind of good. You always have time later. But like, playing them, it's like, I mean, you kind of, I mean, I always figure you kind of, I mean, I, we're, we're kind of, a, you kind of know what they're going to sound like to some degree. Well, about black metal, because I've I seen you mentioned it in terms of this record. Um, yeah, I don't know why. I think it's because it's called the, the Eternal, and I think they, that that title, the Eternal, in a way, um, is somewhat relative to a lot of titles of like black metal records. That word sort of is used a lot in that in that kind of uh, in that language, black metal language. How? What, what's the ratio of people who like black metal? <laughs> None of us like it. You're not supposed to like it. You're supposed to hate it. Depends on whether you can endure it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them, how many gigs he's had. <laughs> <laughs> That's right,